Hi, I'm Bella Shaw, and I worked at WKY Television from 1976 to 1983. Seven wonderful years I'll never forget. You know, I started working at WKY Radio, which was located in the same building as WKY TV, and I worked with all the greats in radio, of course, you know, Ronnie Kay and Freddie Hendrickson and Danny Williams. But there came a new beast into the picture at that time, and it was called FM Radio. So the news director called me in his office and he said, Bella, I hate to tell you this, but we're gonna be cutting back on our news department. And since you were the last hire, part-time at 39 hours a week, we're going to have to let you go. So I was laid off. Can you imagine, after graduating from the University of Oklahoma with a degree in journalism, now I'm unemployed. Well, of course, it was a dream to work at WKY Television. I mean, that was the pinnacle, that was the apex of Oklahoma City and the broadcast world. But could I really start there? Wouldn't I have to go to a smaller station in Missouri or, say, Texas, like Wichita Falls? Well, I talked to George Tomic, and I said, George, give me a shot. You know, I really want to work in television. And that was at a time when the women were really making inroads. Not only did you have Barbara Walters, you had Jane Pauley, you had Diane Sawyer and Connie Chung. And he said, Bella, you know, we are hiring a lot of women, but at Channel 4, we require that they know how to shoot film. Again, I'm dating myself, not video, film. Well, I had shot a little bit at the University of Oklahoma, but my major emphasis was on print journalism. So I thought, okay, what do I have to do? And he said, you have to pass the test of Daryl Barton. Well, Daryl Barton, of course, was a genius, and uh, to have him look at something I shot would be to ask Picasso to look at a sketch. So I commandeered one of the photographers who worked there at the time, Jack Combs, and I said, when you're off work, bring your camera over and just remind me, go over the basics of shooting a story. So I went to a car wash, and did a little sequence. I had my establishing shot. I had my medium shot. Then I cut to the tight shot of the gentleman's face and his hands. I was hoping for a Daryl Barton shot where a rainbow would appear through the, the car window, but that didn't happen. Brought it back, and Daryl gave me the okay. Now I was working for WKY TV. And what do they do? They put me on the farm show, which didn't do a whole lot for my social life, I have to admit. Getting up at three o'clock in the morning, driving to the station, turning on the lights, walking in where the wires from United Press International and Associated Press were all over the floor. I had to rip the wires and divide the wires into different categories. National news, state news, entertainment, sports, and weather. Now, a lot of times, I didn't have time to type up my script before I went on the farm show. So I would just read from the wires. And boy, oh boy, did I sweat it when the machine was low on ink. <laughs> it was very hard to read. One of the funny stories on the farm show, you can see on YouTube to this day. And that's the time that I filled in for Ben McCain and forgot to put on my mic. Well, I casually looked down and said, oh yes, we do need a microphone for this, don't we? And I had trouble pinning it on, and eventually I just held it in my hand and continued the newscast. You never knew what was gonna happen because it was live television, and we didn't have the teleprompters and cue cards and things like that. It was just us. When I concluded the farm show segment, I would head to the state capitol where I covered the legislature for many, many years, uh, starting off with Governor Hall, uh, Governor Nye, Governor Boren, and uh, that was a lot of fun, only it was very challenging to come up with a way to visualize many of the stories that we were covering at the state capitol. I worked in tandem with Oliver Murray, and um, it wasn't just the stories. Oliver and I covered the National Women's Conference in Houston. We covered the Republican National Convention in Detroit. We covered a lot of big stories, the downfall of Penn Square Bank. But it was really working with Oliver day in and day out and just learning about life. Oliver always told me, don't sweat the small stuff. And you know what? It really is all small stuff. I still hear Oliver's voice today 
with those many, many life lessons. I'm so happy George Tomic hired me. Actually, we office together with Ben McCain from Texas. And Ben um, was quite a character, still is, ironically, uh, what a paradox, we still work together uh, in Los Angeles. So after all these years, Ben and I see one another from time to time. And Ben was always so upbeat. Here, I'm not a morning person. I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning and do the farm show. I walk into my office and Ben's, hey, Bella, how you doing? You gonna go out and make it a great day? Yeah, Ben, I'm gonna go out and make it a great day. So funny, all the different personalities of all the people. Uh, Ernie Schultz, uh, we know that he loved airplanes. And so Oliver and I would be coming back from the state capitol and we'd call in to the station and we'd say, we have a great story and it's gonna be your lead story tonight because every person in the state of Oklahoma is gonna get a major tax cut. And there'd be a long pause and then Ernie Schultz would say, well, I don't know about the lead story. There was an air show at Tinker today. <laughs> you know, Ernie liked to work in those stories that uh, involved aerial dynamics and so forth. Uh, Daryl Barton um, instilled fear within everyone who ever shot a story. You were always worried you were gonna get the dreaded jump cut or anything out of focus because those were the two things he wouldn't tolerate. Of course, now in today's news, you know, it's nothing like that. Their shots are out of focus all the time. The way it worked back then was the photographer was really just as every bit as important as a reporter. So when you went out with a photographer, the photographer would establish the shots he was going to use. You would get back to the station, the photographer would edit the pieces and say, okay, Bella, I've got room for 10 seconds at the very beginning of the story. Then we're going for natural sound for another nine seconds. There's a little bridge here where you can talk, more natural sound, and then you can sign off the piece. We tried to do a package, that's what we call a package for the six o'clock news, and we rework the story into a B-roll or voiceover for the 10 o'clock news. Some funny things happened, you know, um, because we were live. Um, those days it was a, a phenomenon, you know, Film was the big thing, but once the microwave trucks came in and you were beaten on a story, you realized how important it was to make that transition from film into videotape. Well, I talked about the farm show, and I talked about covering the state capitol. Eventually, I was able to anchor the weekend news. And I really enjoyed that, except once again, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot for your social life. This is something I stress to all the young people who are looking to go into this business. It's really deferred gratification. I mean, news is not a nine to five job. And invariably when I made plans for something, going out of town and it was time to get off work, I'd be sneaking out the door and they'd say, where are you going? There's a three alarm fire, get in the truck. <laughs> You're off to do a live shot. So that's what I try to instill in the young people is that it's a lot of hard work, a lot of strange hours, and you've really got to pay your dues. Ironically, being a one-man band and being able to shoot your own stories, produce your own stories, write your own stories, and edit your own stories, what we call video journalists, are very much in demand today. With today's economy, why hire four people, your producers and your editors, when you can have one person who's able to set up a tripod, put the camera on top, do their stand-up, go back to edit their story, and put it on the air. That's what they're looking for. So Channel 4 was way ahead of its time. The experience I gained there, the seven years at WKY, really gave me a PhD in broadcast journalism. And it set me up for the international stage. Finally, after seven years doing the weekend news, I realized Linda Cavanaugh was gonna be a fixture glued to the seat in the weekday anchor chair. So it's time for me maybe to put out mm, some feelers you know, I heard that Ted Turner at CNN was hiring a lot of people from Oklahoma. They called it the Oklahoma Mafia, and a lot of people were heading to Atlanta. Why? Because Oklahoma City had such a professional and competitive market. You know, we had staff of University of Missouri graduates and so forth. So I thought, well, maybe I'll have a shot at CNN. Now I just have to get an air check. I just have to get a copy of one of my newscasts. Well, this went on for several weeks. I would have a perfect newscast. I would just, everything went great. Everything rolled on time. It looked fantastic. I ad-libbed fantastic. Went back into the newsroom and said, 
to the control room, rather, and I said, where is my air check? And they said, we have it right here, Bella. We're so sorry. We just didn't get the audio. Okay, well, I'll try it again next week, no problem. So the next week, I again have a fabulous newscast, and I'd come back to the control room and say, how about that air check? They go, we got it, but it's in black and white. I go, oh, well, all right, I have to try again. So the next week, I'd come back in, perfect newscast, walk in, you have my air check? We do, we got the last five minutes. And the kicker was one time when I came back and they said, we have the entire 30 minutes, but it's in Spanish. Well, <laughs> needless to say, I was able to get that air check and send it off to CNN. I flew to Atlanta and I got a job with Cable News Network on the overnight shift. So there again, from the farm show to the overnight shift, not exactly the most perfect hours. One time I was anchoring the weekend news and Bob Berry Sr. was working on a late breaking story involving OU and I was wondering where he was trying to stretch a little bit in order for him to sit down in the chair. Finally, he came huffing and puffing and sat down next to me and started doing the sports. Well, I looked over and I noticed that I guess he had been shaving right before he came on and nicked himself because he had a cut right above his lip and blood started trickling down his mouth. And after the show, I said, Bob, couldn't you feel it? He said, Bella, I could taste it and our phones lit up with people calling and saying, what's wrong with Bob Barry? Was he in a fight or something? Because he was bleeding. That was a funny story. Another one was when the legislature was meeting in a special session and somebody put the wrong film in. So while I'm saying that uh, lawmakers had to work overtime this weekend, they cut to a tape from the Oklahoma City Zoo and it had a lot of monkeys flying from the trees. <laughs> so, <laughs> and wrong video there. A lot of things were said because it was live television, which I can't go into, um, but those were the days. And um, there might be a loud sound, a light might you know, blow out or something like that, and, and you're calm. And you're, you're listening to you know, the control room in your earpiece, and they're telling you you have another minute to toss here or there, or there's a tornado, or so you have to be a multitasker. I would guess that I would have to say that the years I spent at Channel 4 sort of made me who I am today. I have to thank WKY Television for giving me an education. I was paid to learn. Can you imagine coming into a job in the morning, meeting with the assignment director, and he tells you where you're going to go that day, and who you're going to be meeting with, and what kind of story they're looking at? I mean, everything from medicine to technology, health issues. You would learn so much on the job. And it really taught me to put people at ease, make them comfortable. You know, a lot of people, the number one thing they fear is speaking in front of a camera. So when you approach them with a the microphone, just imagine how intimidating that is. Usually we got the best stuff before the camera was even rolling. And then we'd say, okay, that's great. Now can you just say it with the camera? And then they go, sure, no problem. So I learned so much dealing with people dealing with the people I worked with. They had such strong personalities because they were very creative and talented people. So every day I would get into the car with a different photographer and you would have to know their personality. Maybe this person didn't talk much in the morning. Maybe this one talked your ear off. But you learn to get along with people and all those things help me be flexible in life. And I use all those skills in my profession today. I've been able to morph, believe it or not, from those days when I shot a CP-16 at WKY Television to be involved in what's happening in the media landscape today. And I'm talking about social media, whether it's Facebook, your website, Twitter. That's where the world is today. It's all about content. And I've been able to keep in the business. I'm in Los Angeles, yes, I do a few infomercials, and I do work for Time Warner as a freelancer. But I've also started my own business, which is producing webisodes. It's called Biz, and I produce webisodes for small companies that want to get their message across on their website. All those skills, the thousands of days and the thousands of hours that I spent at WKY allowed me to transform and morph into doing what I'm doing today. I went from AAA to the major leagues, and I'll always have WKY television to thank for that. And I'm happy that I'm still out there and I'll continue doing 
what I'm doing as long as I can and as long as people will watch.